A startup means that Falcons... Stage two, locks load is complete. There's the call out for locks load complete. So we're fully load with, with propellants for today's liftoff attempt. Now in startup, that means that Falcon 9's flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. They'll continue to have control of the vehicle through the Ground rest of started. the mission. Then at T minus two seconds, we'll hear a call out, excuse me, we'll see the Merlin 1D engines ignite for liftoff. This time, the payload and Falcon 9 continue to be healthy. We're tracking no issues with the vehicle, and both the weather and range are looking green for today's launch opportunity just about a minute from now. Falcon 9 is in startup. SpaceX LD, go for launch. So with the launch director's final go for launch, Falcon 9 is in startup. All systems go for today's launch attempt. We're going to watch as Falcon 9 takes Amazonas Nexus to orbit. 30 seconds. T plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, and we're carrying the Amazonas Nexus payload on board. Now we've begun tilting the engine, that's called gimbling, and we've begun to turn the rocket horizontally away from Power the and telemetry pad. nominal. That is called a gravity turn. Now we're still going up, but we're also heading away horizontally from the launch pad. We just throttled down the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for our next event. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, point of highest stresses during ascent. Max Q. So with that, we are through the point of highest stresses on Falcon 9. Now the next major milestone will be coming up at around the T plus two minute and 30 mark. That'll be main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then seek out. And back engine chill. Excuse me, and second engine start number one. Now I talked a little bit earlier about the gravity turn. Part of the reason why we do that maneuver is to pick up velocity. A rocket has to go about 17,500 miles an hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. And that's why these next three events are pretty important. Miko is where we shut down all nine of the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages will separate. And then we'll start up that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage for second engine start number one. It's ultimately the Merlin vacuum uh, and the second stage that will carry the Amazonas Nexus satellite into orbit around our planet. So again, those three events coming up in just under 10 seconds. Main engine cut off. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Great views. On the left-hand side of your screen, we're looking up through the inner stage at the second stage. And we've got a view here on the right-hand side of our screen of the Merlin vacuum engine starting its burn. This burn will continue about until the T plus eight minute mark. Next major milestone will be fairing separation on the second stage that coming up at about T plus three and a half minutes. 
now that we are outside of most of the atmosphere. We don't need to carry the weight of those fairy halves. So we'll jettison them back to Earth for attempted recovery and reuse on a future mission. Bearing separation confirmed. Great views from the top of the second stage. You can see that the fairings have separated. Once again, we'll be attempting to recover these fairing halves for use on a future mission with a recovery vessel named Bob. It's just about T plus four minutes into today's mission. And if you're just joining us, we had a successful liftoff at 8.32 p.m. Eastern from our Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And you're joining us in the middle of the first of two planned MVAC burns ahead of satellite deployment. This is a particularly exciting portion of the mission because we have two major events happening right on top of one another. Right now, you've got that beautiful view of the second stage engine burn. And coming up at around T plus six minutes, on your screen, you'll see the first stage's entry burn begin. For the entry burn, we will relight three of the Merlin M1D engines on board the first stage, starting with the center E9 engine, and followed shortly after that by the E1 and E5 engines, which collectively work to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which help us recover and reuse the first stage booster. The first entry burn will be one of Not two entry for both vehicles. scheduled burns for the first stage, and you can hear both vehicles are still on track. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also called the rocket plume and this deposits a layer of soot on the surface of the vehicle. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight builds up a little more on the outside of Falcon 9, making it look just a little bit toastier. In the bottom of your screen, you can see that Falcon 9 is still picking up speed and continuing to climb on its way to space. Stage one entry burn startup. There we heard the call out that our entry burn has begun. Stage one FTS is saved. If you're just joining us, on the left-hand side of your screen is the first stage re-entry burn, and on the right-hand side, we have the second stage on its way to orbit. We expect this entry burn to last just about another 10 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. There we have confirmation of stage one entry burn shut down. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage on your screen that is supporting today's mission is about to perform its final entry burn for the sixth time, previously having supported SES-22, iSpace's Hakuto-R Mission 1, and three Starlink missions. Today's landing target is our drone ship, just read the instructions, which is positioned in the Atlantic Ocean, about 325 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. The Merlin engines on board both the first and second stage are actually quite similar, but they are optimized differently. The Merlins on stage one are optimized for sea level. These achieve approximately 190,000 pounds of thrust during both ascent and descent. Fun fact, at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power and is consuming approximately 700 gallons of fuel per second. By contrast, the MVAC engine is optimized for approximately 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage 2 FTS is saved. Which is, of course, the vacuum of space. Stage 1 landing burn. See that stage one landing burn has begun, and in just a couple of seconds here, we will shut down the MVAC engine on our second stage. MVAC shut down. 
there you have it. Now we're stage just deploy. just awaiting confirmation of nominal orbital insertion for the second stage. Nominal orbit insertion. Good call outs there. And hopefully you heard it through the cheers in the background. Spread the loss of signal, Cape Canaveral. That landing marks SpaceX's 170th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Of course, the mission isn't over yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light the MVAC engine for a second time at around T plus 26 minutes. We'll see you back here before then. In the meantime, enjoy the space tunes. <laughs>